So politics ain't my thing, but seeing all the wacky characters that run for office in these elections really catch my interest. And it doesn't matter what country they are. Like, I guess it's just seeing these kind of people it, it gives me a sort of sense of nostalgia because it's the kind of people I would try to avoid eye contact with as a kid when I was in a New York subway. So, yeah, and the people you're looking at here are <laughs> candidates for Tokyo's elections. Oh boy, it's, uh, it's uh, got its own little kooky cast here, huh? Before I go ahead, I just want to say I'm no expert in Japanese politics. I'm just here to see the funny. If you really want to know more about the why and the how that this all happens, how they get into these elections, it, I would like to credit Jeffrey J. Hall because his tweets definitely shined a good light on it as well as uh, his video, which I'll link in the description, goes into more detail about how this happens. I'm not here for the why or how or explaining that. I'm just here to see all the chaos unfold. But of course, before going into Japan's crazy candidates, I have to take a step back and reflect on my own home turf. Like it was watching two geriatric grandpas fight for the last tapioca pudding cup in the retirement home. Yeah, it, it was not pretty. Like you have Biden going on some strange tangents, mumbling his words and forgetting certain sentences. I, he clearly needed some tune-ups. And I'm gonna to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we can do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. <laughs> like The Onion, SNL, uh, skits can never come close to reality anymore. It, it, it's gone way beyond. Uh, it's gotten its own uh, playing field and it's getting outclassed. Like satire does just absolutely jack compared to reality now. In that final couple of months of my presidency, we had, according to Border Patrol, who is great, and by the way, who endorsed me for president, but I won't say that, but they endorsed me for president. You did say that. You just said that. What do you mean you, you're not gonna say that? Yeah, oh, it's, it, it's, it's too much. It, it really is too much. And going through more of it, uh, uh. Son was not a loser, was not a sucker. You're the sucker, you're the loser. President Trump? Uh, first of all, that was a made up quote, suckers and losers. They made it up. It was in a third rate magazine that's failing like many of these magazines. Uh, he made that up. I don't know, man. I, I just don't know. When I was like a wee lad, uh, I didn't know much about politics, but I remember like, you know, sometimes seeing the adults watch it while I was drawing with crayons or whatever. Um, the pol politicians seemed pretty nice, even though they came from two separate parties. They weren't like, when they were debating, they weren't like taking insults at each other. They were just, they were even congratulating. They, they even showed like a video of like Mitt Romney and Obama back in, I think the 2012, where they're doing their debate. They were pretty civil, very civil. This, this is just going for each other's throats here, man. And honestly, the worst thing that happened, I remember throughout the debate, is when they were asked a question about childcare and neither of the candidates bothered answering it. They were too busy trying to put each other down. That says a lot. That, and the opioid crisis question as well. Both of those questions were, uh, it, it, it really is uh, representative of where we are at as a nation that our leaders Aren't you bothering with actually uh, answering those questions that people want to answer to? In your second term, what would you do to make child care more affordable? Just to go back, the general got fired because he was no good. And if he said that, that's why he made it up. But we have 19 people that said I didn't say it, and they're very highly respected, much more so than him. He is the worst in history by far. Thank you, President Trump. President Biden? We are the most admired country in the world. With the United States of America, there's nothing beyond their capacity. They're the finest military in the history of the world. The finest in the history of the world. And, and that's a sad reality. These aren't joke candidates. These are actual candidates. The joke candidates, you could point your finger at, laugh a bit. These guys are genuinely serious. They want to run your nation. And we're going to let it. We're going we're gonna to let it happen. And then the weird part is when it devolved into a... <laughs> I can't, like, 
<laughs> Watching it was just so ridiculous. They devolved into them like comparing like a competition with golf. Like, but the, the, I guess like just the entire nation uh, isn't as important as who's better at golf. That That's how we determine who's going to be our leader. I just won two club championships, not even senior, two regular club championships. To do that, you have to be quite smart and you have to be able to hit the ball a long way. And I do it. He doesn't do it. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. He challenged me to a golf match. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? That's the biggest lie that he's a six handicap of all. I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight? Never. But I had, you know, I mean, how many? I've seen you swing. I know you swing. Let's not act like children. And then they wrap it up in the end, talking about World War Three. That that is very reassuring. Like I I really remember a time, I guess before the 2020s, where the term World War Three was connected to conspiracy theorists who were just loony bins. Nowadays, it's not so loony. Every day I wake up wondering, hmm. Are the bombs going to rain today? Is it going to be Fallout 5 outside? And he's going to drive us into World War III. You want a World War III, let him follow and win and let Putin say, do what you want, NATO. Just do what you want. There's a thing called Article 5. An attack on one is an attack on all. Uh, I had to take a break for an existential crisis. But moving on, joke candidates are a thing all over the world. Uh, even America has one, which is, I tend to follow him a lot, is Boot on Head. He is very well known. Well, his name's not Boot on Head, but that's what I call him. Berman Supreme. That's what his name is. I kept thinking Boot on Head, but as you could see, very... Very uh, charismatic looking fellow. He's got his giant toothbrush, boot on head, lots of ties. Um, yeah, I, he's definitely fighting for that vote. <laughs> but you might know him for his um, stance on interdimensional space battles in bombing Narnia. My fellow Americans and others. As your president, I have promised to engage in hostilities only with powers that I deem to be a real and immediate threat to our peace-loving nation. And that is why I have ordered the Interdimensional Strategic Space Horse Command to commence bombing of Narnia in five minutes. If we do not fight them in their dimension there, we will have no choice but to fight them in our dimension here. Pretty sane candidate, considering all the things we've gone through so far. But yeah, uh, these kind of joke candidates happen a lot. It's just to show that, hey, anyone can run. Like Britain and its prime minister. So I know it was like Lord Buckethead, of course, not to be mistaken for Binface, Count Binface, sorry. I did not mean to drop the count there. But yeah, they tend to have a little beef. Yeah, um, there's even video. <laughs> But Elmo's there as well. Cool, cool, cool. Harvey Jonathan David, commonly known as Count Binface, Independent, 69. Hughes David Stephen, commonly known as Lord Buckethead, the official monster raving loony party, 125. <laughs> There's also that one guy in Texas who changed his name to literally anybody else who's also running for president. Um, he's got my vote. Uh, <laughs> he's, I'm pretty sure he has many people's vote. But yes, let's get back to the main topic is my deep dive into Japan's Tokyo elections and their crazy candidates. Some of which who are technically taking this very seriously but most of them they're just doing it to gain some attraction to maybe their social media their music career their acting career it's just to get some attention basically our first candidate we're gonna start off with is sawa shigimi i'm probably gonna butcher a lot of these names my bad but as you could see from his 
attire. I think he might have uh, missed a memo of what era we're in right now. And uh, well, he actually has his like a poster and a QR code for his uh, resume of all the experience he's had, which is like a lieutenant colonel, a burger flipper at McDonald's, a business owner, a Buddhist monk, and he's also played o Oda Nobunaga in his stage play. Hey, he's got a stacked resume. Uh, I think he's got a good leg in this race. <laughs> have to say, he has a good uh, personality. If he releases his Bankai, I think uh, he's got a good chance of winning this and wiping the rest of the candidates. But... <laughs> Moving on to the next guy, it's the leader of the golf party. Uh, I tried finding his name, but I, I think it's just leader of the golf party. Yeah, um, interesting fellow. Just has a golf hat on. That's all I got from it. That, that's all, all I got from re trying to research this. Another one, a pretty big one actually, is this luchador guy named Yokoyama Midori. Yeah, uh, I I don't know. He, he just looks like someone who stepped out of Nacho Libre, not gonna lie. But yeah, as you can see, he used his speech time to warn viewers not to vote for stupid candidates who look suspicious. So yeah, he's apparently an internet comedian and tends to joke around and this was a, a kind of joking thing for him. But surprisingly, he was actually answering policy questions and taking it seriously, respecting the time. That is, a, a, a certain event happened where he decided to leave because the viewing numbers <laughs> dropped. <laughs> The absolute chutzpah to have to just say, you know what, there's not enough viewers watching this stuff, so yeah, I'm out. Uh, I'm definitely out. I'm not gonna waste my time with these peons, these peasants, if you will. I I, I gotta give respect to that. <laughs> that's that's something else. Of course, in the mixed bag of crazy nuts here, you have some normal people, some actual people who are trying to run for political office, such as Yukio Yamato. So as you could see. He's pretty chill. He posts like campaign posters, places in Japan, and of course his pet rabbit, which is very cute. But you know, a pretty normal sane person in the vast sea of abnormalities. Granted, this could also be some sort of strange quirk of his that might make him also somewhat insane because his third, every third post is his rabbit, like, like clockwork. It, it really is. Cute rabbit though, very cute rabbit. Honestly, at this point, I might just hope the rabbit runs for election. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, I genuinely wouldn't. Moving on to the next candidate is Goto Teruki. And uh, his speech was actually a rap style of anti-suicide. Good message, and not gonna lie, I don't understand the lyrics, but I uh, respect the flow. He does it for almost two and a half minutes. I, I gotta give him props for that. That, that, that is uh, very, very talented. Definitely talented. It, it kind of feels like the elections are like a talent show at this point. But um, he then moves on to do cosplay uh, in his office uh, campaign, running for office poster. I, Okay, but the biggest one I've seen so far and the most, I would say, infamous and um, a bit scandalous candidate is this guy. This guy named Kawaii... Kawaii. Wait, is it actually Kawaii? Uh, it is Kawaii. Oh my god. His name's Kawaii Yusuke. And um, from first glance... He seems like a very odd fellow, huh? Uh, he tends to cosplay as the mask or the joker sometimes 
flip-flops between it. And his stance is anti-censorship, as well as advocating for <laughs> polygamy to solve Japan's declining birth rate. Which, okay, I mean, at least he's tackling it in his own way. I would think trying to reduce the workload, which, to be fair, he does go into that about how uh, the salary man's lifestyle is pretty toxic and it's really depriving the youth of their happiness, their freedom, their ability to breathe. So many animators you could hear from like horror stories of MAPPA and other anime studios where they get worked to the bone and they're just stuck sleeping at the office and th there's even a term for like dying because of work exhaustion. So I do respect him going for that angle. But regardless, he, he tries to, you know, go through a comedic way of approaching these topics. As you could see when he entered the uh, campaign speech area. Hi. Hi. Of course, there was drama when he did enter uh, because he had a little scandal that his election posters had N nude, nude imagery. It, it had a naked woman on it uh, because, again, he's trying to advocate for anti-censorship laws. And yeah, that, that 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 is weird to have that as your poster. Uh, but the person who's trying to get him expelled from the event was another candidate called AI Mayor. Yes, you heard me right. It's an AI Mayor, as you can see from the picture. Uh, the person behind is probably the actual handler of the. AI mechanics, whatever. And they're not the only ones. I've read others trying it as well. Yuriko Koki, 71 years old. They made an AI version of themselves posting the video announcing their candidacy. They, yeah, we're, we're in a very cyberpunk era. Huh? It's not science fiction anymore. But moving on to the scandal about the naked poster, Elon Musk, of course, had to chime in and put his two cents, or as we could see, one cent, because that he could only afford one word here. But yeah, the, the poster did not go so well, and he got a lot of complaints for it, and a warning from the police. Of course, I'm not gonna show you the poster. Uh, it's not completely nude, but it doesn't leave much to the imagination either. So... Yeah, he gave a statement out saying that he'll take down the posters and hopefully, you know, nothing like this happens again. But yeah, all in all, he goes for the Joker thing because he's very anti-rich. He calls out the candidates who are coming in with like Rolex watches and all this bling while they're trying to run for an office to help the everyday man when they don't even understand the everyday man's struggles, which... Sadly, is a problem that happens all around the world. It's not centered only in Japan. It seems as days go by, more and more of our government officials have lost their mind, clearly. Props to the interpreter in the back. <laughs> they even signed the laughing and all that. They had to go through a lot of crazy candidates interpreting each and every one. So kudos to them. Much, much respect to them. Also, Kawaii Yusuke doesn't just dress up as the Joker of the Mask. Here you could see him dressing up as Governor Koki. Um, if that name sounds familiar, it's the same one that used AI to announce their candidacy. So... Yeah. Yep, really rocking that skirt. And um, yeah, no joke. I, I looked her up. This is how she actually looks like. I mean, it's not the actual shade of green, but I'm not that picky. It's a good parody. Definitely a good parody. And if you think... Um, She's normal. She's not. She had her little thing. I mean, it's it's probably a cultural thing that I don't understand, but you could see she's just doing something with pro wrestling, but 
It's a pretty weird train ride to see one of the electoral candidates just slapping a shirtless wrestler who's being held back by another wrestler. God, I, I can't imagine waking up at 7 a.m. seeing that. Like, I just, I just want to go to my work, come back. But yeah, um, that's all I've been doing these last few days, diving into all these strange candidates and getting lost in the lore and just eating up any information I get. These are the ones that really stood out to me the most. There are probably a dozen more because if you go back to the actual picture, there, there seems to be a lot of um, hidden characters that I still haven't seen and I'm still researching it through. Well, I wish them luck that they get a good governor that deals with whatever issues they're dealing with because people deserve a good leader, you know? It's just a shame most of the time. I, I keep hearing people from other nations talk about how corrupt their leadership and their government is and it's sad that it's a common problem. Yeesh. But yeah, that's um, that's uh, all there is. I I can't I can't physically go through more and get more because I'm at my limit. Uh, th there's a certain limit of craziness I could handle, and I've gone way past it. So yeah, I'm gonna end it here. And again, if you want to learn more about it, I'll put the video in the description below. And yeah, that's all there is. Thank <laughs> you.